Well, welcome, 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 Barbara Lamb, to our big Thank Omni you. exclusive. Thank you for joining us. How are well, you? It's wonderful to be with you. <laughs> I'm very happy, and I'm always happy to talk about these particular subjects. Our audience is so excited to hear more about yourself, your life, all the exciting things that are happening. And before we were just chatting that you have a really exciting new news uh, that just came yes. out. So let's talk about it. Yes. The excitement is that just two days ago, a new book was published, uh, compiled by me and a woman named Mary Edwards. So the name of the book is E.T. Friends in Space, a new book for children oh. about children's extraterrestrial encounters. Uh, in my work as a regression therapist and psychotherapist, and we have 18 different scenarios, each one a different kind of adventure experience that children have had with these beings. They consider them very, very positive, and they may talk to their parents about it, and the parents might say, oh, that's just your imaginary friend, oh. or you must have <laughs> dreamed it, or oh, you have no. an active imagination. And, you know, that's really difficult for the child because Absolutely. the child knows that these visitors have been real, and, and yet they're not believed. Children are terrific, and, you know, I think children basically like to tell the truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, they have imaginations too, some more than others. But I think when children are reporting things that they have experienced, they want the truth to come out. They want to be heard yes, they for do. the truth. And so the more adults who can really listen to them and ask them to say whatever they want to say, about those experiences and about the beings, oh, that is really good. It, it opens yes. up dialogue, which is really important. It's something that you've been doing for a very, very long time, many, many years in therapy, opening yes. up dialogue about things that are tough to talk about, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a validation to anybody of any age, children or adult, um, who have had these experiences. And that's very helpful to them. Oh, yeah. So I, I want to read this book. <laughs> okay, good. It yeah. uh, has a hardcover edition and a softcover edition and a Kindle edition. Autograph copy. Um, you cannot get the autograph copy through Amazon, but um, you can always go to my website, which is barbaralamregressions.com. Yeah. Well, I recommend all of our cosmic listeners to do it that way, to go to your <laughs> website, barbaralamregressions.com and order this new and amazing book. It sounds so incredibly healing, not only for the adults, but especially for the children. So yeah. let's learn more about you. We're all so excited to learn more about who Barbara Lamb is. So you did over 2000 regressions. I was one of them, by the way, if everyone's watching, uh, yes, I, was, I was one of the yes. regressions. That's how Barbara and I became friends and we met. It was amazing. I recommend everyone doing a regression because you never Wonderful. know what's in the very back parts of your subconscious. What got okay. you into regression therapy? How long have you been doing it? You know, for people who don't know you, let's, uh, let's give them a taste of exactly who you are and, and how much incredible experience you have in the okay. realm of regression therapy. Well, I began as a psychotherapist uh, being licensed in 1976. I'm still a, a psychotherapist. And then in the mid 1980s, I began to get training as a past life regression therapist. Uh, so then I was doing past life therapy as part of my psychotherapy practice. And then in 1991, I had heard that there was such a thing as extraterrestrial beings visiting and taking away for an hour or two um, many, many humans. I had heard of it and that I could use the regression therapy techniques that I had already learned 
and had been using for a few years at that time. And I could use that to help people get more details about their experiences with these other beings. Most people uh, do begin having contacts with extraterrestrials. If they have contacts at all, they usually begin in early childhood. My first person came not wanting a past life regression, but wanting regressions to find out the details, experiences that she had been happening with unusual beings who <laughs> turn out to be extraterrestrial beings. And her mother found me and asked me to do regression work with her. I was very encouraged about that work because even though she had been highly traumatized before she came to me, uh, she found out during all of these regressions that we did that the beings, uh, that they were doing some really good things with her in these experiences and were helping her. And, um, and then the very earliest I have ever known about in regression work is a man who, big, tall, six foot four, husky, sturdy, strong man, first extraterrestrial experience. And it happened when he was in his mother's womb, interesting in itself. But even more interesting was the fact that when he was in his mother's womb, he was visited by an extraterrestrial being because the infant had a congenital hole in his heart. And that meant that when he would be born, he would not be able to live because all the blood would be spilling out an extraterrestrial being who did not come into the womb where he was, but told this little infant growing inside his mother's womb, told him that he was here to help that infant. I am here to put an invisible electromagnetic strip over the hole in your heart. Late in his 40s, the surgeons found that he had a huge hole in his heart, the size of a silver dollar, and they were amazed wow. that it wasn't spilling out and killing him. I got goosebumps hearing that story. I love that story. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I get goosebumps too about the whole thing. And very often that kind of physical work that's going on with the person turns out to be that the beings are healing them. And so there are many, many cases of people being healed of something really drastic, like cancer or heart failure um, or lung problems, or wow. brain problems, or kidney problems. That just must have blow, uh, like just blown your mind when you heard things like this. People being miraculously healed and didn't yes. understand why until you did the regression, and then they got the the understanding of what happened to them. Yes, and yeah. so that really puts it all in a different light. That they are taught, they're taught wonderful skills like telepathy and telekinesis and a whole range of psychic skills. And they're not only healed themselves physically, if they have something wrong with their bodies, but they are also in many cases taught how to heal other people when they come back to earth. Some of them have actually changed their careers. It, it absolutely yeah. is a wonderful gift. And this conversation is so wonderful and so magnificent because we're seeing a whole different side to the conversation about intelligent beings. You see, out there in space, there are council meetings that happen among different extraterrestrial species. And there's one very large council meeting called the Galactic Federation, quite like our United Nations, that these nations gathering together would like to see the human nation evolve enough in consciousness and behavior so that we would qualify for being members, permanent members of that great galactic federation. It actually 
took me about three years to prove to myself that there really were UFOs and there really were extraterrestrial beings. There are many, many species of beings up there in space who really care about Earth. They really care about humanity. <laughs> right. Really fun and I think significant aspects of these subjects that we're talking about today is that they still have this sense of mystery. Like, who are these beings? And what are they doing? How do they manage to get here? Sometimes uh, the extraterrestrial beings will come and appear as if they're some familiar life form, like a white owl. And one of the ladies I regressed several years ago, so she'd open the sliding glass door and step out into the yard, top of the fence. That was a lemur. So we did a regression to one of those lemur experiences. And it turned out that the lemur look was really a screen image for her to see something familiar, but it really was an extraterrestrial. And, and it's, it's that moment yeah, but, where you're looking at something, you're thinking like, something is off about that animal or that creature. And you just, you, yes. you just immediately your human brain comes in. You're like, nope, I'm not going to go there. What you're saying right. is after regression, you might've realized that your initial response to, oh, that's a little bit strange is because it was a, a, a cosmic being. Something a little bit different. Something a little bit different, being. a little bit like off. It, that's, that's awfully big for an owl or, oh yeah. Um, well, a deer doesn't really just stand on two legs. You know, yeah. or things of that sort. <laughs> so sometimes people have seen a bear. Yeah. It looks like it appears like a bear standing, but that really is a screen image of an extraterrestrial. Or I've heard somebody who encountered a really big dog, a tall dog, probably about five foot five tall. Now that's pretty big for a that's dog. A dog. But yeah. it, it certainly looked like a dog with big shiny eyes, as some dogs have. And um, that turned out to be an extraterrestrial posing as a dog. And that's where regression is so important because it helps us review that information and see it in a different way. Like review the information in the exact way our original perception saw it, not what was overridden later by our human brain and mind. <laughs> now, there are cases that I know of from people I've worked with. It's a man who was taken and then the door opened to that room and in came the most incredibly exotic looking female mounted him for sex. During the act, the screen image faded away. It turns out to be that it is really an extraterrestrial being. He was having sex with a reptilian Female. He wasn't able to have sex with his wife for about eight years or so until he started doing regressions with me. According to him and his wife, they were able to resume their sexual activity, which he was very glad about. <laughs> <laughs> Saving right? everybody. Because <laughs> I thought, well, if anybody else ever comes for this reason, I don't think they will. But if anybody does, that well, that's good. I know that I can be helpful to them. Yeah. And that was the main point for me was to help people. A few months later, another lady came and then another and another. After a while, it's added up to more than 2,030 people because they keep coming. <laughs> so the number will keep increasing of these people whom I've done the regression work to. Sometimes it's all about just breaking down a belief barrier about a specific aspect of the universe. So I'm hoping that this conversation, maybe someone hears something and they think, well, that's interesting. I've, I've thought of that before and now I can delve into it more. So th this is very exciting, the things you're talking about. Um, one of the things I've noticed this year in particular, this past year or maybe two years, that more and more people have been coming for regressions who don't need to go back to any particular experiences they've had, 
but the main question that they've had in their minds for quite a while is, why am I here in this life? Ooh. What is the main purpose of my having come into this lifetime? They weren't just here to live a regular old ordinary life, larger reason mm -hmm. to give service in some particular way and they don't know what that way is. And some of them find out through the regression, they're part of the preparation for ascension. That means the people's evolving in consciousness enough to be in a higher dimension while still living here on earth, that they will suddenly have that sense of receiving information. Uh, so I think that's very good news for humanity, that <laughs> more and more people are sort of awakening. But they begin to realize after a while, whoa, there's some sort of a line of connection between me and these other beings who are trying to help out by dropping this information, information. in. And very often those people uh, come to know that they are having these contacts with certain kinds of extraterrestrial beings. Some of the very benevolent species would really like to see humanity improve and evolve, rise in consciousness and spirituality and increase their awareness that there are many other beings in the cosmos besides just us. We're at a, a very unique time in history <laughs> in so many ways, one of which is that our governments, U.S. government and some others, are kind of preparing, it seems, their public for the fact that there really are UFOs and they get disturbed with anything unknown flying into their airspace as a potential threat. So whatever we're hearing now officially from the Pentagon, the CIA, um, other parts of the government tend to be couched with a sense of oh, threat or maybe yeah. threat, we better mm -hmm. watch out, maybe threat. And so it's very important, I think, to balance that out with knowing that with many of these personal encounters with the beings on those very same crafts, uh, that there can be a lot of helpfulness going on. Very complex subject. And it's really nice to hear you talk so highly and so positively about it, because you're right, that message really needs to surface more often. Some of the beings, quite a number of the beings have done is <clears throat> a hybridization program. They create hybrids who will be who are actually uh, living here on Earth as regular people mm. with some extraterrestrial genetics, who's mostly human. Uh, they will be very in touch with those beings and they will be coached and inspired in doing the good work. Well, Barbara, that's a perfect segue because now I would love to ask more about all of your acclaimed books. You have so many good books that people can oh. get their hands on. Talk about your favorite book that you've written. What was your favorite? I know it's hard because you have so many good ones. Is there They're one that's favorite. your favorite? They're all They're your favorite. all favorites, right? <laughs> so it is hard to choose. But um, the first book that I wrote back in the year 2000, but still very applicable to now, um, is about the crop circle phenomenon, mm. which I went to England to research personally um, every summer for 27 years, history, the development of the symbols in the crop circles and uh, beautiful color pictures, beautiful patterns of geometries, a few each year that are man-made. We know that, I've talked to the hoaxers, I've I, I know that they you're the expert you know the hoaxers yeah <laughs> yeah but I think most of them in my quite educated opinion um, are genuine and that means they come from this unknown mysterious source 
which I think is an off-planet intelligent source. Uh, that crop circle was full of energy, a change of energy, an increase of energy, which can actually be felt by people, mm -hmm. and it can actually be measured by various kinds of equipments, too. Symbols for communication between the two beings, us and... Yeah. Yeah, communication, uh, like do, for activation, I maybe? Think, I do think that the crop circles are here for many purposes. One of them <laughs> is for communication between that intelligence out there in space and us gathered over the years. We must have 3,000 at least, perhaps more, uh, crop circles, and they're all a different pattern. It makes you think this this has to be a real phenomenon that's happening. Oh, it, oh it's yeah. a huge phenomenon, and I think it's very significant. Another book that I wrote, uh, actually the second one, is called Alien Experiences, and that features um, 25 cases from my caseload up to that time, which was 2008. And then the third book was uh, Meet the Hybrids. We have a subtitle, which I really love, which is The Lives and Missions of E.T. Ambassadors oh. on Earth. And these um, eight hybrids interviewed at great length, all born here. And uh, they certainly have always looked totally human, that they had certain differences. Like one um, has an unusual blood consistency. Another one has different bone consistency. Another one has thumbs that sort of flange out at the end. Um, another one has unusual musculature, uh, much weaker muscles. They have all grown up to be of service completely. That's what their lives are about. Some of them have said that the hybrid program is going on all over the universe, not only with humans and extraterrestrials, but various species are combining other species or components of other species to create hybrid extraterrestrial beings. So, and you ask, which is my favorite one? Well, I think as I was writing each one, that was my favorite one. <laughs> and it's, it's very hard to say, to but at this moment, uh, my favorite work, because I'm so close to it, to just completing it with Mary Edwards, th this is my favorite right now. So we have one final question um, for you. And the okay. final question is, uh, what would be your main message to humanity about cosmic beings? Kind of your legacy of what you want people to know what you've learned in, in the, the many, many years of regression therapy? Overall, I would like humanity to know that, first of all, we have a cosmos full of many, many different highly intelligent beings. Uh, they consider us an amazing planet. I have been told personally by one of the extraterrestrials that planet Earth has more species than all of the other planets in existence put together. And many of them um, have said that they have had some help in creating human beings. And therefore, uh, they kind of look at us as their children uh, working with us humans. It's becoming more and more important to us humans too. Oh, uh, absolutely. Just simply among mm -hmm. humans. One of the main messages that came out today was that it's, it's a very positive experience. There's a lot of benevolence inside the universe and there's a lot of healing that happens between these intelligent beings and humans and that we are very loved. There's a yes. sense of love there. I mean, what, what a human would describe as love there's a lot of unconditional love. It is. There is a lot of <laughs> unconditional love, even though the package, the being may look really, really different. And 
even some of the beings that have been more frightening, uh, such as the reptilian beings, uh, there are different species of reptilians. And uh, there are some very positive, favorable, kind, likable, probably even lovable uh, beings <laughs> who are in that broader category of reptilians. Increase more of our awareness and consciousness, we become more accepting of everyone and all of us. And what you just yeah. said, some of the alien beings uh, might not look friendly, but they are very, very loving. So it's almost yeah. like if we can't accept each other the way we are and look, how are we going <laughs> to accept a very loving being that may have fangs or big eyes? I mean, what would, what would your message be for someone who might be afraid of the way some other intelligent being looks? Like the shock well, value. Yes, and, and I think probably most people would feel very frightened <laughs> of many of, especially some of the beings, but even all of them, just because they're different and, and we don't know what to expect. That's one of the really wonderful things about the regression work, helps us to get past any prejudice that we might have about these other beings. And then that hopefully will help us to get past prejudice toward other humans who yes. are different yes. in skin yes. color or culture, language. And that is what many of the extraterrestrial beings would dearly love to see us do on earth. And that is to accept each other, even with the differences and cooperate and get along together and create a beautiful life on earth for, for all people. I would cry. like to see that too. <laughs> you said that so well. And hopefully one day we'll all be part of the Galactic Federation with your help, right? With, <laughs> with your help, with regression therapy. So I would love to talk about some of your upcoming events, your big conferences. I know you have a few that are coming up. Things are opening up again. Very exciting. So yes. go ahead and tell us about some stuff. Some of them are even going to be happening in person. June 6th through 12th, UFO Mega Conference. Yes. And it's going to be held in Laughlin, Nevada. A whole bunch of speakers, including myself. Also at that event, we have experiencer support groups. I will be conducting those groups. So then there's another June 19th and 20th, Saturday and Sunday. Wonderful. And that is a hybrid conference. And that is going to be on Zoom. I can't wait yeah. to see you. That's going to be amazing. So Good thanks. things coming up. Oh, Let's yes. It. It's another conference in South Dakota, Friday, July 23rd, uh, through that weekend, including Monday, the 26th, going to a special Native American uh, celebration a festival as part of that experience. And there will be speakers and we may even go to the Badlands of South Dakota for Ooh. special processes and sky yes. watches. And um, anyway, that that is um, a really exceptional conference as well. To anyone that is listening, if you have any kind of experiences that Barbara has brought up, or even if beginning we talked about you're looking for your purpose or why you're here then you'll definitely want to talk to Barbara. Barbara is a wealth of information and also she's incredible at regression therapy. You can reach Barbara at barbaralamregression.com. She has a form there. You can access that. You can contact Barbara. All, everything that Barbara's talked about, whether that was her books or her conferences that she's going to be speaking at will be in the description box as well. Um, thank you so much, Barbara. Is there anything else you want to let people know about our cosmic audience? There's so much more going on in life than we have realized. So much more going on in the cosmos. And let's look at it all with eyes of peacefulness rather than threat and enmity um, because there's so much benevolence and so much caring for us. And we, in turn, can care about them. So I wish you all many, many blessings.
Oh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you everyone for okay. watching. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.